So that's very welcome. Maurice Payne hasn't imposed economic sanctions on coup leader Min Aung Hlaing, but with Australian economist Sean Turnell still in military detention, she needed to tread carefully. Consular officials have only had limited access to the advisor to Ms Suu Kyi since his arrest after the coup. In everything we are doing, we are seeking Professor Turnell's release. It's not known what his detention conditions are like, but for some they've been brutal. <laughs> One of Ms Su Chi's party officials died after being arrested on the weekend. His relatives believe he was tortured. Mazoe Ford, ABC News. Senior women in Scott Morrison's cabinet are locking in behind Linda Reynolds and Christian Porter as the pair face questions about their tenure in the federal ministry. Labor's being accused of trying to capitalise on Senator Reynolds' medical problems to push a political attack. Matthew Doran is in Canberra. You need to stop doing that. <laughs> Stop. Respect is a perennial theme of International Women's Day. There's no excuse. <laughs> the centrepiece of the federal government's latest campaign. If you see disrespect, unmute yourself. Former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins' decision three weeks ago to raise her voice over the din of politics brought that issue to the fore on Capitol Hill. The Parliament is starkly not immune from the sorts of issues that have impacted workplaces around our country and frankly around the world for far too long. In Tegan's allegation she was raped by a colleague and left unsupported by her boss Linda Reynolds is fueling debate over the Defence Minister's suitability to remain on the front bench. She's extended her sick leave for a pre-existing heart condition for another month, but the opposition believes she needs to go permanently. I ask if the Prime Minister still had confidence in Linda Reynolds. That was before any health issue had been raised. It is, in my view, entirely unreasonable to suggest that uh, a person who is dealing with uh, a health issue should be treated in that way. The Prime Minister really can't afford to lose another woman from his cabinet, but Linda Reynolds' position isn't the only ministerial headache for Scott Morrison. Kristen Porter's strenuous denial of a 33-year-old rape allegation is untested. The New South Wales Police say it can't investigate after the woman at the centre of the complaint took her own life. Senior ministers argue that pursuing an independent inquiry into the Attorney General's alleged conduct is both unfair and premature. We have a process going on with the South Australian coroner, and I think it is absolutely appropriate that those processes are allowed to take place before we start having any further discussion about this issue. Tonight's episode of Four Corners reveals the woman first spoke in detail about the rape allegation with a sexual assault counsellor eight years ago, long before she first alerted police. The woman subsequently told officers she didn't want them to investigate. New South Wales's top cop wants the sad incident to highlight the plight of people coming forward with allegations of sexual assault. The matter itself, even with the victim, probably would have struggled to get before a court. A message unlikely to sway the political debate anytime soon. Matthew Doran, ABC News, Canberra. And former Liberal MP Craig Kelly is under mounted pressure to sack his right-hand man, Frank Zombo. The political advisor accused of inappropriate behaviour towards young interns working in Mr Kelly's electorate office. New South Wales Police have confirmed that a criminal investigation is underway and at least six women have made formal complaints. Mr Zombo has denied any wrongdoing. And the former Foreign Minister Julie Bishop has spoken out about a culture of unprofessionalism which has developed in Parliament House. She told 7.30 that victims of harassment may not want to speak out over fears that allegations might damage the reputation of political parties. There's a powerful culture within all political parties to ensure that no individual does anything that would damage the party's prospects, the party's image or its reputation, particularly at election time. There's so much at stake. One party forms government, ministerial careers are in the balance, um, marginal seat holders could lose their seat. Hundreds of staff jobs are on the line if you lose the election. The Hong Kong's chief executive has indicated the city's September elections could be delayed after China introduced new legislation designed to tighten Beijing's grip on power in the financial hub. Carrie Lamb told reporters the new law will ensure the city's next chief executive will be a patriot. Now, whether Hong Kong people will continue to, um, to have uh, a role in the future development of Hong Kong's political structure, the answer has to be yes. 
uh, but it has to take place within the proper constitutional framework, and that is one country, two systems. When a deadly earthquake and tsunami hit Japan's north coast almost 10 years ago and triggered a major nuclear accident, residents fled Fukushima and never came back. Only a handful remained in the zone and After the 2011 nuclear disaster, the Takae says he has official permission to stay in his empty township to look after his feline friends. The police and firefighters will come and ask me why I'm still here. I told them that I have to be here because I need to take care of these abandoned cats. They asked me to evacuate many times, but at that time I thought I would die. And if I had to die, I decided that I would do it with them. The project cost him a lot, but it isn't even his savings. About $9,000 a month is spent on food, fuel, and vet bills. The guy even looks after wild food. While his family don't approve of his lifestyle, the guy vows to continue looking after these animals for the rest of his life. Also saving lives is rancher Masami Yoshizawa. Oh, 